Good morning, everybody. I'm Paul Listnick. Coming up on WGN TV Political Report. After nearly half a century inside the State House, Mike Madigan bows out. The latest on the once powerful House Speaker's quiet resignation and his lasting impact on Illinois politics. Plus, it took us over 200 years to get here. And that's what Dr. Martin Luther King was fighting for. As one chapter closes, another begins at the State House. Tamon Bradley goes one on one with new Speaker Chris Welch about the budget, redistricting, and his historic election. And later, a scathing report details a botched police response to protests in Chicago. What Mayor Lori Lightfoot says about more changes needed inside the police department. And welcome everybody to WGN TV Political Report. In just one hour, a committee on Chicago's southwest side will pick the next state representative for the 22nd district. And for the first time in 50 years, that person's name will not be Mike Madigan. Madigan resigned his seat on Thursday after a legislative career that began in 1971. He came to power as a member of the old Chicago machine. He was mentored by Richard J. Daley and his own father, who served as 13th Ward Superintendent. One nicknamed the Velvet Hammer. Madigan held the Illinois House Speaker's gavel for 36 years. That's the longest reign of any leader in the country. Madigan made a name for himself as a cunning politician known for rewarding loyal lawmakers and clashing with governors on both sides of the aisle. He leaves office under suspicion amidst a federal investigation that charged ComEd executives with trying to bribe him by giving jobs and contracts to his friends. In two words, it's not good. But our federal investigations of corruption in Illinois are ongoing. We have a lot of work ahead of us, and we will get that work done. Now, Madigan still has not been charged with any wrongdoing, but his new moniker, Public Official A, made the once powerful speaker radioactive to his own party. He was denied a 19th term at the helm of the Illinois House back in January. Madigan's departure announcement ticked off a list of accomplishments from raising the minimum wage to education funding, ending the death penalty in Illinois, marriage equality, and more. Madigan even called himself the target of vicious attacks by people trying to diminish his work, saying in part, the fact is my motivation for holding elected office has never wavered. I have been resolute in my dedication to public service and integrity, always acting in the interest of the people of Illinois. I leave office at peace with my decision and proud of the many contributions I've made to the state of Illinois. And I do so knowing I've made a difference, Madigan's words. Now, Republicans who sparred with Madigan often invoked his name in campaign battles, celebrated the decision. Many Democrats he praise on the former speaker, Governor Pritzker, giving a tepid goodbye on Thursday. I, I wish uh, Chairman Madigan, uh, former Rep Madigan, former Speaker Madigan well. I mean, one thing I will say is that when you serve um, as long and in as dedicated a fashion in terms of just his sheer, the number of hours that the man put into the job, uh, his family can really suffer. I really just want to call them out today and say they really uh, deserve kudos. Now, for now, Madigan maintains his position as 13th Ward Committeeman, and that means he's got 56% of the weighted vote to decide on his own successor. My first guest served in public office for more than 40 years himself, first as Chicago, Chicago alderman, then as Cook County clerk. He did have a one-week stint as mayor of Chicago in between. He's now the chairman of Good Government Illinois, David Orr, joining me now to talk about uh, more of the end of the Madigan era. Clerk Orr, good to see you again. Thanks for joining me. My pleasure, Paul. So I was intrigued to talk to you because you also issued a statement upon the announcement of Madigan's resignation. Uh, you are a lifelong Democrat. You've known Madigan for decades. But in your statement, you noted that the sudden resignation by Madigan is a clear indication that Democrats are moving towards a more progressive political direction. Is that really the reason that's behind this resignation in your view? Well, clearly progressives are trying to move in that direction. Uh, you know, we can't give credit to the GOP because Madigan's right. A lot of vicious and unfair attacks coming from the Republican Party. Uh, and many of the traditional Democrats supported him. Uh, so part of his departure is, of course, the courage of uh, several uh, Democrats uh, in Illinois, including quite a few women, um, but also the scandal. Um, the bottom line is Madigan is a very complicated person. 
Uh, he was very helpful to me and other people. He's been a, a big help to labor, as you mentioned. He, he did allow a minimum wage to be passed while he was there. Uh, much of the election legislation that I proposed and so forth, he was helpful with. I would say the key to Madigan's um, failure to the extent that he's failed in some ways is because he never changed from the kind of wicked corrupt Chicago machine politics like say when he started which was prevalent pretty much everywhere under old man Daly, and it continued after that I think that was uh, around his neck frankly and so Commonwealth Edison frankly is just the tip of the iceberg um, there's all sorts of shenanigans that traditional old school politics plays. Mm. And yes, he used his power for some things that I think are important, uh, but because he also was using it to encourage some pretty wicked politics. Uh, and those kind of machine politics rarely help the people. They help the insiders, uh, powerful insiders, be they politicians or corporations. So I think that's the change that I would like to see is people recognizing that some of that old school, uh, corrupt, inefficient politics has got to go. So, uh, by the way, kind of a quick yes or no question because you've been around politics for so long. He was supposed to resign at the end of the month. All of a sudden it became immediately. Do you read anything in that? Not really. I think... Uh, um, he may just want to get it over with. He might want to move quickly to get somebody new in there. Um, there's all sorts of factors. Could be personal. I don't think it matters a lot. Um, but I, okay. I do think we should uh, give a lot of appreciation to those people who didn't really pick the next speaker, but it had a lot to do with at least calling on Madigan yeah. to step down for the good of the party. All right, you also noted in the statement you issued that uh, po old politics, as you called it, has done extraordinary harm around Madigan, leading to the loss, your words, of Democratic seats, the failure of the graduated uh, income tax amendment, trust in government. How much of that do you hang around his neck? Well, again, um, Madigan's never been found um, to do anything illegal, okay? But he's implicated in this scandal. And partly because of that, and partly because of other scandals, he's had to play a back, back roll seat. So it allowed the Republicans to unfairly attack the fair tax, but the fair tax was critical uh, to Illinoisans. Uh, and that did great harm by not passing. And also, both as speaker and as party chairman, you don't see Mike out there you know, on the campaign trail, he's very helpful behind the scenes and he's shrewd. But if the leader of your party, or in this case, the leader of the House, can't be there publicly, that's a real damage to the party. So I think that's that's why he partly had to go. Now, we don't know. Obviously, if, if he gets embroiled in deeper ways, like Ed Burke has, yeah. then all bets are off. But right now, uh, he's just stepped down from the speakership. Okay, uh, and, and, and let me ask you this uh, regarding pensions. Look, he's been seen as a you know a champion for workers in the labor class. But that being said, he also got that language in the 1970 Constitution that has made it impossible to change any pension plans going forward. Does he go down as a hero for that, or a problem with regard to the state's fiscal problems? I'm trying to be balanced here. Yes, there's a label there of helping working people, which I like. But also, when remember I talk about this mantle of old school politics, he and others and his buddy Berrios did enormous harm to workers and others uh, over the years in Cook County. Uh, Berrios, the former assessor, finally now admitting to pay some of the fines that he owes. Remember, they hurt little people. They help fat cats. They helped the Trumps of the world. They helped powerful people. They helped all those people involved in the real estate deals, but they didn't help average people. And there's the difference that I'm trying to get at. You can't move ahead and make the kind of accountable government which leads to better changes for people uh, unless, I mean, if you still play those kind of games. Mm -hmm. So while I can turn one side of the coin and agree with some of these positive things, the other side of the coin, the whole taxing system and the way Barrios handled the assessor's office and a certain degree, the way the Board of Review is continuing yeah. Barrios' policies, that hurts people. And it hurts the little guy. And that's the genius of political scams. So, uh, David, just, just about a minute ahead. left. I do want to ask you. So the influence of Mike Madigan going forward, one of the things that uh, the current Speaker Welch said is, hey, I'm going to miss him when it comes to redistricting. He's a phone call away. Does Madigan fade away in time or does he still reign? Because I always said he didn't retire because of redistricting coming up. What's his influence? I think that's really up to Mike Madigan. He is shrewd. He's smart. There are plenty of people in Springfield that want his help, not just Springfield, who'd want his help. Uh, the real question is, is how much would uh, the new Speaker allow? 
um, whether or not people feel pressure that he also needs to be getting out of the party leadership because Republicans will beat him over over the head on a constant basis. So that's uh, we just don't know yet. Um, so I really can't speculate except uh, I believe there's an opportunity now with his departure to move ahead on what I consider a more effective, efficient government. Uh, and that's what we should be focusing on. And we'll see that play out. Former Cook County clerk and my favorite title, former mayor of the city of Chicago, David Orr, thanks for your time with me this morning. See you, Paul. All right. We're going to take our first break. Coming up next on WGN TV Political Report. Uh, we are a supermajority, and we have the ability to govern the state because we won elections. Yeah, that's the guy who took the gavel for Mike Madigan. Tamon Bradley goes one-on-one -on -one with House Speaker Chris Welch.